I guess we're back with How to Train Deaf Dogs, so I'm getting ready to rock here on Facebook. Hi right, guys, we're back with How to Train Deaf Dogs. I, I did want to tell you guys, Larry still has his cyber lynch mob coming after me. So now I just, for all of them, I now just block you. And I don't even read your comments. Yeah, I'm actually able to do that. My advice is bring the battle to Facebook. My, the link to my Facebook page is right there. So bring your battle to Facebook. Because people have to understand when you go on the internet and you have no profile picture, no videos, you're just an anonymous person. You don't really have it. You're just a nad, honestly. You don't have any validity. So that's my advice to all of you. You, uh, you know, Larry's little cronies is... Look right below this video. There's a link to my personal Facebook page and bring your battle there instead of going on YouTube as an anonymous, just little, you know, with no videos. They don't even have a picture. Some of them are dumb enough to use their real name, but, you know, they, they don't have anything. You know, it's not like some name you heard of. Anyway, guys, so this is what I want you guys to think of. And if you said, well, I've never trained a deaf dog, I'm going to be honest with you. They're everywhere. They're everywhere. So if you have never trained one, you may have to actively, you know, try to seek them out. Rescues are usually full of them. Um, they're everywhere. They're everywhere because genetically people don't understand how that works. And so they just, or they do understand how it works and they understand a percentage of them are going to be deaf. And, you know, some breeders like back in the, you know, day or whatever used to just, Call them. There's actually something called bear, um, a bear hearing test. But I'll be honest with you, the way I do it, uh, I had this one one time from the Humane Society, and these. I'm going to tell you, there's a, something about deaf dogs. People will get in their mind that a dog is deaf when it really isn't. That's happened to me two or three times. I got one from the Humane Society, and honestly, at the beginning, you maybe don't question it if they've determined it. And so then I had this dog here, and it can be hard in this environment maybe to tell whether one is just modeling the behavior or whatever, but then I had it in the crate, and I took a squeaky toy. Okay, so it's in an airline kennel. This, this to me, is the best way to do it. They're in an airline kennel. You know, they're facing you from the front. They can see out the door. All you got to do is take a squeaky toy and put it on the side where they can't see it, squeak, squeak, squeak. If it looks that way, then take it and put it on the other side, squeak, 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 because it's, it would have to be, it's it's a very rare dog that doesn't look at a squeaky toy. Oh, so this dog couldn't find the squeaky toy fast enough ver by virtue of its hearing. So I'm like, oh my God, this thing isn't deaf. And they still wouldn't believe me. After that, they still wouldn't believe me. So then they just determined that it was hearing impaired. It was very weird. It did get adopted though. Its name was Dodger. I'm gonna go back and find a video of it. Oh, I kept it for months and months and it finally got a home. And I sometimes I still see the lady walking it. But what I want you guys to understand, it's it's not a handicap in dogs. And the reason people can't train dogs in general and deaf dogs is because they can't walk and chew gum at the same time. Once people start talking, they I think they lose control of the ability to make micro movements and everything else. And we need to understand that's what dogs see. That's all they see. They if you do have a broad sweeping gesture, they saw three things before that. It's it's how they are. They're designed to see micro cues. I mean, if you said, what's your uh, level of expertise? I accidentally put a trained retrieve on a deaf boxer. And if you said deaf boxer with a trained retrieve is a dime a dozen, I'd say they are. I wasn't even setting about to do it. I just did it by accident because this thing... You know, I think what you, the best way to, to take the approach of training a deaf dog or a hearing dog is really, I'm going to let this thing believe it's got a degree in human behavior. You know, that when it sees me doing this, this is what's getting ready to happen. That's what I do with shoe. You know, I want to go over to the platform. I've got, you know, my hand goes like that. So she's thinking to herself, oh God, this thing, she's so easy to figure out when its hand goes like that, it's going over there. So every time I do my hand like that, I do go over there. So I'm going to do a video with her in a minute because now I actually have her picking up the dumbbells by accident because I was trying to train one of the other dogs. Oh, I was training nachos. 
And I put the oh, and then she just bum rushed him and grabbed it. I had to grab another one real quick and throw it down there. So, you know, and I wasn't going to say no, no, no. She's terrible. She's terrible. Anyway, so that's what I want you guys to think of. If you, let's just use JC for an example. I don't think he's here, but, uh, you know, came here and I said, lost my voice. And he said, but how will I know what you want? I'll have ways of showing you. I'll have ways of showing you. Yeah, honestly, all I've got to do with Shu, because she thinks I'm a complete idiot, all I've got to do with her is look at something. Not look at her, look at something on the ground. Then she'll pick it up, because she thinks to herself, that idiot's looking at that. Maybe if I grab that, it'll give me something. And it works, it works. So, you know, that's how I want you guys to think. When, once we start talking to dogs, it becomes difficult you know, and I know you guys always see me. I'm always like this and everything. I don't think I used to be like that. I can go back and find the old videos. But, you know, the reason I'm like that is because what I'm, to these dogs, on some level, you know, you want to, the dog wants to think to us, this thing reads like War and Peace. Not this thing reads like Sea Spot Run. It's very, very crude, you know, and it's honestly, you know, they would view you as like, you know, all somebody has to do is say, I seen Oh, I seen something, you know, and you're like, oh, yeah, yeah. you know, so once you kind of do something like that with a dog or they believe that you're very one dimensional, you know, with your crude sit, sit, you know, you know they've got to say to itself. It's, it's got micro movements. It's got micro movements to predict what it's going to do. So if I look for those, then I'll be successful. If not, I mean, they're not going to look. You know, if you're just reading a book and it's just, you know, one word on every page, you know, they've got to think there's complexities to your actions. I think that's maybe the biggest thing to think of. So if you said, what did deaf dogs teach you? That, that they can live forever and never hear a spoken word and learn all kinds of things just based on your actions and not you making them obey or anything like that. Them believing, you know, they've got a degree in human behavior. Oh, if I get that thing, it'll give me some, you know, so I'm going to get this boxer out. But, you know, to me, that's honestly, you know, that it just, and to it, I'm sure it's very obvious. So clearly it wants those things to pick that thing up. You know, what if I do it, you know, maybe I'll get something too. And so she did. And so now she does. I can point in everything. I mean, you know, and she learned all that because she has a degree in human behavior, not because I taught her, you know, my actions are very predictable and I do have a neutral. You've got to have a neutral with dogs. You've, you know, got to have a, the ability to pause when you're not saying anything. You can't constantly be talking. You know, that's what you have to think of. There's got to be, you, and you know, and it, you, it's, it's not with your hands on your hips. And I know guys probably don't like to have their arms folded like that, but, and if you said, why do you do that? Because I'm operating the dogs from my core. So they're saying there's going to be micro movements emanating from the core of this thing. It's shoulders, everything, You've got every little micro movement. And, and they can't not see that. That's the problem. They can't not see these micro movements. So when you eventually don't have any, and then they do, they do just tune you out. When you see these dogs that don't look at people, and Brinkley, I mean, he's the worst. He will, He's so smart. I mean, he can't even really honestly be dragged away from me. If somebody else, he just doesn't have any interest in anybody else because he doesn't find them fascinating. He finds them more one-dimensional or something. I don't know. He's a very, very uh, strong case for that. But, you know, that's what I want you guys to think of. I, you know, if you said, what do you think people do wrong? I think the very first thing they do wrong is just come up and just give themselves away to a dog. You know, if somebody came here and they said, well, this person is a person of uh, an individual of status and, you know, you would meet them and you would sit there and you might have a conversation. You're not going to be all over these people. You're not going to be all over these people. You know, I mean, yeah, Billy Joe Armstrong comes 
you know, you're going to have to hold it together or her security guards are going to slam you on the ground. You know, you've got to think of it that way. You've got to conduct yourself. People want to just go up to a dog and start petting it and stuff. It is terrible. I, it's that, that, that this industry doesn't understand that that's not a viable reward or that anybody wants that. I don't, you know, and I don't mean you can't, you've got to be able to handle dogs. And I'll I'll do a video about that today too. It's not it's not that you don't want to touch them. You don't want to touch them when you're trying to teach them something and think that that's a reward. You know, like rubbing their head. It's just, you know, you would have to explain to me in depth where head rubbing in in many many animals is considered you know, a term of endearment. Because they just start biting the people's hand and everything else. And then they're correcting it for biting their hand. So anyway, that's what I want you guys to think of. You need to understand that, you know, if you have to stand in front of a mirror and stand perfectly, perfectly still. And if you said, what was the, what is the smallest cue that you could give a dog? What would be the smallest cue you could give a dog? With your eyes, with your eyes. And if you said dogs can't understand IQs, that's all they can understand. That's all they can understand. You know, and if you said, well, uh, you know, it'd probably be better to operate them. You know, your eyes be the core. It's hard to do that, though. You know what I mean? You can operate, you can operate your eyes different from your body. And it's, it is a learned skill, you guys. I think, you know, you should get in front of the mirror. You need to have your feet together. You have, you need to have you know, what I call a collected body language where your body's getting ready to say something and you're not all loosey-goosey. You're not all loosey-goosey, just blathering on is what that is. So you've got to have a collected body language where what the dog sees is it's it. That's how they see us. It's getting ready to say something. Hi, Adrian. Uh... So if you need to do, you, you, you do, you need to get in front of the mirror and you need to stand there and say, this thing doesn't understand a goddamn thing I'm saying. And so let me just be, uh, hi, shy. Uh, let me just stand really, really still and start understanding how small of a gesture they can see. Freak can see and bump to all of them. You know, what I teach those dogs is to look at me until I go blink, blink, and then they get the treat, blink, blink, then they get the treat. And if you said, what does that do? It helps them. Hi, Shai. I'm so worried about you. I'm going to message you later. Um, it lets them know I'm speaking with my eyes. That's what it does. I don't think, I mean, I only just started doing that, but, you know, and things have got to have a beginning and an end. That's what I see people not doing. They're doing it too long and they're not putting a specific end on it. You know, I think, I think if you said, well, I've got like two or three 30 second drills, I, I do. I say, oh, no, that sounds good. That sounds good. Beginning and boom, boom, boom. You know, not even in a minute and a half drill can get, you know. And if you said, well, where could you go with that? Well, you can't. Anything you can get a dog to do, you can build it up. You know, as these chat board people say, the duration, yeah, yeah. you know, but um, that they're talking about making it stay, but, you know, getting it doing anything, healing, flashy healing or whatever, if you started out and that's only makes sense, you know, to do a short, fast drill. And then, and then that's the end because they can lose track of time when they're having fun. And then you, you can extend it and then you still have a specific end. So anyway, but that's, that's what I want you guys. If you've said, I am a professional dog trainer and I've never trained a deaf dog, I I'd say, please get out there and do it because they're everywhere. And I, I've had people message me. I can't think where this guy was from in some second world country, but he had gotten a, it was either a Dogo or what are the, oh, a Neapolitan. Maybe it was a Neapolitan. Do the, are those deaf? Anyway, whatever it was, it was a puppy and he bought it and he took it home and it was deaf and he took it back to the breeder and they convinced him that, you know, this poor thing was so handicapped it could have no quality of life. Yeah, and put it down. So then this guy found my videos on YouTube and was just, you know, devastated that, you know, 
it would be hard to get over that. It would be that you put a beautiful, healthy puppy to sleep just because it was death. You know, just because it was death. In, in an animal who hearing is not important, you know, because if you said, well, hearing would be important in the wild, they, even in a pack, I think you could have a pack of wolves. You could have a deaf one. You could have a deaf one, you know, because look at Crash. Oh, you had a German Shepherd rescue that was deaf? Oh, he's now a lifeguard. Oh, one of those ones. Yeah, I've seen a few shepherds like that, uh, Alice, where if you get in the water and try to swim, these some bitch gonna come in there and save you. Drown you in the process, but they can't tolerate to see, they can't tolerate humans in the water. There is a concept is that. So no, a Schutz and Three dog. It was years ago. Bricks on steam flags with the dog name. Oh, JC, we were talking about you. you. We were talking about you because I said when you came here, I, I lost my voice, so I couldn't speak, and so I was giving you the pager and giving you gestures like you were a deaf dog. So anyway, if you guys are not training deaf dog, it'll teach you. It'll teach you when your hand starts going towards that thing. It's it's. They don't want that. If you said, you know, you, you would have shoe bottom doing a lot more. If you gave her head pats, yeah, I'd have her doing a lot more, like probably biting my hand, that dog, you know? Or the dog would be shying away. You're not, look, people aren't looking at the big picture. So, you know, with the deaf dog, and I'm going to try to post, I went back, because I remember for like two years on YouTube, I've fallen so far behind with all my uploads that I never even labeled these. They were all just on YouTube under the file title, like 100 dash, you know. So I went back and found some of those. Oh yeah, for like two years, I lost control. I mean, you guys see what I've got going on. That these people, you know, that these, you know, people are so invested in maintaining a method that doesn't use the pager is, is bizarre to me. You know, that you could say, I have got a commitment to dogs. I've got a commitment to dog training. I want what's best for dogs. And this woman and her pager need to be shut down. And we need to safeguard Larry Crown's method forever. It's it's so, I don't understand it. I don't understand it. So that's why I just block them now. And they can bring it to Facebook because you can't be anonymous on Facebook. I guess you could, could you? No, I don't think you could. You know, they'd have to come out and say, here's who I am. I've won the national more times than any other trainer. And I can see what you're doing has absolutely no validity. <laughs> And you're trained to retrieve on a deaf boxer. Uh, oh, yeah, that's why Louie. Oh, that, who's Louie? Oh, Louie always bites your hands and you always pet his head. Well, there you go. You know, and I want you to think of it if it was you. And what, what the, the analogy I make to people is like the, you know, like in the movies, they always have the ant that wants to kiss the kid and stuff. And they're just like, ah, you know, because this woman's idea of affection and theirs aren't the same. You know, and I try to explain it to people that come over here with the puppies and stuff. When they say, why don't we pet their head? I said, what if you brought your kids over here? And I just could not keep away from these kids. And I just kept going. And then your kids started trying to get away from me. And then I said, what's wrong with these kids? And then I chased after them and did it. And then they swatted at my hands. And I said, you better get these kids in line. You got some aggressive kids here, lady. You know? And they kind of see, oh, well, oh, yeah. You know, so I'm, I'm, I am. Hello, George. Uh, oh no, George is on my text. Uh, George is on his way over here to work. Um, you know, that's, that's where things go wrong. That's, you know, and again, you guys with a deaf dog, especially if you said, well, what would be the most important thing possibly that you could, um, you know, develop would be a dog that defaulted to following you as opposed to the opposite of you, there's only two choices, you guys. That's what I want you to understand. They, they have two choices in their world. It's got the suggestions or you do. If there's two of you, there's always going to be a bias towards which one had more suggestions. I can tell you with all my friends, when it comes to going out to eat, I'm the one with all the suggestions. I found all the good sushi places. And I'm the one that discovered Norwards. Sure, it's been there for 20 years, but, you know, they didn't know to go there before me. So these people trust. Hey, girl, I got your message. What, can you come over today and get that puppy? Give me a thumbs up.
She's like, no, I can't come over, lady. I already find somebody to buy the puppy. What do you want from me, lady? <laughs> anyway, that's what I want you guys to think of. If, you know, and it's, it's not like pack leader or anything else. Oh, yeah, you, Jill. Uh, I got your message. I was already asleep. I went to bed at like 7 o'clock. The, the dog's now. I'm back to the thing now because of daylight savings time or something. Instead of getting up at 3.30, this morning they got up at quarter to 3. So rather than just try to stay asleep, I just got up, uh, let them all out, and went running early before because there's every time I go running, there's one this one lunatic on the road that's always going to work. That's the only person I see this one lunatic. So I said I'll just go early. I won't see that lunatic. Oh yeah. Oh no. He said you know, and I, you know it's not like he can miss me. I've got you know I've got three large dogs, a Doberman running point wearing a uh, Greg's collar and uh, a headlamp. And sometimes I've got a neon collar too, that blinking when it wasn't charged this morning. And I'm, I've got one big German Shepherd on a leash and I'm being followed by another one uh, wearing a headlamp. So it's not like this guy can't see me, you know, he just doesn't, you know, I'm sure he's just thinking, get out of my way, lady, I've got to get to work. <laughs> anyway, that's what all I want all of you guys to do. You know, and if you said, what did deaf dogs teach you? That's, that's what it was. How, because when I look back at my old videos, it's like, you're, you're dumbing these dogs down by the way you're giving them these commands. You're, you're almost just saying the command. And that's what I see people doing. They're just saying the command into the air and they're not augmenting it with all kinds of micro cues. It's, it's, you know, that's what you've got to do. You've got to say, uh, you know, if I'm going to be a book to this dog, then I have to have the book isn't open yet. Okay. Now I open the book. Now, I'm, you know, it's, and you know, maybe I didn't know that from videoing them either. Because I'll tell you, sometimes I watch my old videos and I see some poor dog following along, trying to do everything, you know, doing everything. And then I'm not, I don't notice. And it's not getting any rewards. I just, I feel terrible. I'm like, oh my God, why didn't I give that dog something? Apparently other people see that in the videos too. I'm just considered, you know, <laughs> you know, but if they're defaulting to it, you know, that does. And that's, I think that's what I'm seeing. If you guys are teaching the dog something, and it's not defaulting to it fairly quickly, you may need to reassess what you're doing because maybe it isn't understanding it. You know, and if you said why, you know, what would if what would be the best way to avoid corrections? Add as many cues as you can. Add as many micro cues as you can. Because if you had a lot of micro cues, if you created a behavior with a lot of micro cues, you would know very early if you were getting refusals and stuff, and you would you would be able to fix that early. It wouldn't be like you're just, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't really even talk about corrections that much because I really don't know that much about them anymore. You know, because I just understand if you create the things and they're looking, you know, and that's where people go wrong. They've made themselves to the point they're not interesting anymore. Yeah, it's just like people's marriages. They're not interesting anymore. And what you need to understand, you know, and that's why, I don't know if you're watching Patty, but she's got two sister pit bulls. And I, I, don't want, I don't want things to be the way they are, but I understand how things go. And then she keeps them in the same crate together. They're like nine months old now. The problem with that, with dogs, is familiarity breeds contempt. And so if you said, that's not true. People get married and they stay together forever. Nothing can pry them apart. <laughs> no, they get married. And next thing, this guy's chewing with his mouth open is all these people, all this woman can take. She can't get every smack of these mashed potatoes. This woman is ready to drive a butter knife into this guy's temple. You know, so that's what you have to think of. If familiarity breeds contempt, then I better pace myself in this relationship with this dog and I better continue to be more interesting instead of I get, you know, this is who I am. I gave myself away and I'm very one dimensional and I read like C spot run, not war and peace, you know? So that's what you've got to, you know, does anybody read war and peace to the end? You know, so that's what, you know, the dog is always reading you. That's what I want you to think of. It continues to read you. It doesn't have to, you know, because if you said, well, okay, first we started out, you know, we taught it the alphabet, then we taught it words, 
And then we taught it, you know, and now I got it reading War and Peace. That needs to be your flow chart. Teach it the letter A, and I'm going to end up teaching it to read War and Peace. If you're not setting that, then I would ask you, where are you going? You know what I mean? In, in highly intelligent dogs, I'm just going to tell you, it's going to breed contempt a lot faster. It is. It is. It's going to breed contempt a lot faster. You know, and that's why when people say the dog turned on them and stuff, it's, there really isn't that. There really isn't that. Because there was a process that led up to that. So there's no just suddenly turned or suddenly bit. You know, there's all, and, and this is, you know, the dogs, and this is the problem. The dogs are giving all kinds of little precursors, but we're not seeing them. So you guys need to say to yourself, I'm going to stand in front of the mirror perfectly, perfectly still and develop a, the book isn't open yet, but I'm a book. You know, I'm a book. I'm a war and peace, you know. And so, you know, once you've got the neutral and you're, because if you said dogs don't ever stand perfectly still, oh my God. You know, if you said what would be a good example of that, the way dogs are fooled by statues and stuff. Oh, I've got that one statue of a German shepherd. I'll go put it in the middle of the driveway and wait and see these suckers fooled by this thing, you know, and spooked by it. I can tell you what was spooked dogs. Go get a silhouette. I used to have one on my gate. I did. I did. It was a long time ago. I remember. And it was like of a pointer, but it was a silhouette of a standing dog and the tail was up and you would get like boogery dogs. People would bring boogery dogs for training and stuff. And they would see this silhouette of this statue dog and boo, boo. It's a threat. It's a threat because it's standing still. They understand that that means that some, that something's going to happen. Next. So you've got to develop the ability of standing completely still. That's why when you're just jostling around all the time. And I think that's why the platform is good, you guys, because I think it's easy to develop, you know, for you guys and for me too, to just have the still thing. So to say, okay, we're getting ready to read a chapter now. In this chapter, honestly, I don't even know, you know, Dostoevsky or whoever wrote that book. I'll look it up. JD, where are you? I need you to look up who wrote War and Peace. JC, look that up. JD's not here. I, I need to get, I need to, in fact, I'm going to scour Facebook. I like all this because I, I, I love, I love the JD and JC characters, but we need like a JE, a JB. We need all the different JB, JC, JE, JD. I need all of you guys to look up all this stuff. Yeah. That sounds good, doesn't it? Anyway, guys, I'm going to go out there and do the deaf boxer, but please go out there in the world if you have to, and if you said you don't do pro bono work, oh my God, yes, I do. You've got to, if you're not working with rescue groups and you're a dog trainer, you're failing. You're failing. If you're not doing low cost, and I understand people, you know, have mortgages and stuff. Not me, but other people. So you do have to charge them. And these rescues do get money. But, you know, I mean, you should do it, obviously, at a reduced cost. But, you know, you should either be doing low cost, uh, reduced cost, or pro bono um, rescue work. And if you said why, because those dogs will teach you a lot, I say, and you guys see, I've got a lot of big, good-looking, purebred dogs. But, hi, Abraham. Oh, a guy named Leo. Okay. Abraham, look it up. Google it right away. You he, see, like I can't. I'm on my phone, lady. Hi, Donna. I hope you saw uh, John Henry yesterday. I'm so in love with this dog, girl. I don't know as I've ever loved a dog more. And he's the most stoic dog. I'm going to have this dog wagging his tail by the time he leaves. But uh, I'm going to have a whole list of everything. Whoever gets him, this cooking the chicken. I mean, it's going to be all day. It takes all day. You got to cook the chicken in the morning. And uh, he, he's got to have the fish oil and oh, just all his stuff. So I'm going to take him to the vet next week, girl, though, and get his um, health certificate. But I love him so much. So anyway, but that's what's going on, you guys. You need to be out there doing rescue work because... I say all the time to these young dog trainers, you're going to have to train a lot of toads. And if you said, you know, how did you get to the point where, you know, everything you own is paid for? I trained a lot of toads. 
I trained a lot of toads, you know, and I, I still do. I mean, I, I still do, you know, but I, because I, it's hard for me to say no, but you know, you're going to learn more from these dogs. And I'm going to tell you what you're going to learn, how they got to believe what they believe about people. Oh, Donna, I, you don't even know, girl. There was another dog from Chipley Carson. And I realized, and I loved that little dog so much. It was so hard for me to give her up. I never thought I could love a dog more than her. But now I love John Henry. I actually think John Henry might be her father. They've got such a similar temperament. But the only thing about him, girl, I don't know if they've got another dog, but he's so sensitive about his back end. He doesn't like any dogs. You know, he likes to follow me and lay right behind me and stuff, but he doesn't like any dogs coming near him, jostling his back end. You know, he doesn't like that, you know, because he can't get up real fast. So I don't, I don't let any of them jostle around near his back end. I understand that's the only, that's the only time he ever really has a problem. Yes, Carson. I just uploaded a video of her today, girl. I loved that little dog. It had such a pure heart. It just, her housebreaking wasn't perfect. That was the only like deal breaker that I let her go because she would have accidents. I, you know, I never corrected her or anything. And John Henry's her, but doesn't have accidents. So, uh, oh, they have another bully now. All right, girl, I can probably take him once, uh, once John Henry goes, I like to get the pit bulls for training, uh, because I, I think I've, I have figured out how to train them after many years of training them. Cause if you said how many pit bulls have you, Oh, Tolstoy. Yeah, that's right. Okay. <laughs> Tolstoy. Yes. Yes. I should have known that. Um, so, uh, I was thinking of that other one, uh, uh, crime and punishment. Uh, that was, uh, was that Tolstoy too? I don't know. I just was saying a thing about that though. And he was in front of a firing squad and they were getting ready to kill him. And the czar, don't ask me how, uh, oh, the adopter has another bully. Okay. Well, as long as it's older, it won't matter. Anyway, they were getting ready to kill him, and the czar gave him a approval and put him in hard labor, and you know that's what changed his life. So anyway, all right, guys, I'm gonna go out there right now and do the thing with shoe bottom. And Jill, uh, text me and let me. Uh, oh, a smaller one. Oh, he gets a, he doesn't bother anybody. No, he's gonna be perfect. You know, he naps most of the time, and then he goes on his little daily walk. You know, nice little, just a little daily walk. And you know, Donna, when he was, you know. I mean, he was a proud, proud dog when he was younger. I, you can just see that about him. And I don't, you know, I think what he, I don't think he was neutered early. I, you can just tell by how big his head is and stuff. Just there's ways I want you guys to understand. You can tell by looking at dogs and maybe I should save that for another episode, but there's a way to tell by looking at them, males and females, what, whether they were spayed or neutered early or later in life. I mean, there's that one black and tan lab I have. It was spayed way too early, and they don't uh, they don't develop properly. Oh, I'm making you cry, Donna. Why, girl? I'm so sad. I mean, I'm gonna be. It's gonna really be hard to let John Henry go. I've got to tell you because it's he's just now, you know, getting to trust me. And you need to tell him he's very sensitive. He's not. He doesn't want to get head pats or anything like that. You know, I don't even think he doesn't even want to get petted. He just likes to just live and then get his treats. He tell, please tell this woman, go get Imes biscuits because he's got to have those. Every time he comes in, he wants a biscuit. And then the blue dog bakery, those big cookie things. He doesn't like any kind of dog food. Oh, don't try to give him canned dog food. I bought him the, uh, I'm sure you guys know that, uh, uh, Merrick, the canned food. That's the, they got the Grammy's pot pie, Thanksgiving day dinner. Oh yeah. This stuff is human grade food. If there's a hurricane and the house collapses, I'm trapped in the garage, I'll be able to eat that stuff and it'll be good. But he wouldn't even eat that. He wouldn't even eat that. Uh, anyway, okay, good. He's got a fabulous home because I've just gone on it. Oh, no, no, no. He's the most special dog ever. Oh, no, he's special. And his ears, I gotta go back. They're gonna have to, you know, I'm sure he's just had chronic ear problems. But that little thing on his back, whatever that is, is healing. And his coat is starting to come back, as you can tell, wherever he was, you know, his tire waves covered with fleas or whatever. So, anyway, guys, I'm gonna run out there with Shu and do the deaf dog video. So, I want all of you guys to go out there, share. I know you've already got the deaf dog. Um, but get out there and look around and, you know, volunteer 
you're not going to hurt the dog with the pager. Explain to these people, volunteer to help these dogs if you can. You know, because I've trained a lot of them and they were able to be successful if the people had that. So anyway, I'm going to go out there right now with Shu and uh, hopefully, because, oh no, I had her fetching the dumbbells and everything this morning. She was doing the, you know, so... But she thinks, you know, in her mind that she she has a degree in human behavior. So anyway, I'm going to go out there right now with my dumbbells. And next up, Shu the deaf boxer trying to retrieve. Hi, guys. All right, guys, that's my advice. Get out there, you know, do pro bono work, you know, or whatever you can do. So get out there and find those deaf dogs.